Church, Pastor Calvin Duncan, who is coming to talk to us about who we are as Occupy the Dream. Come on, give him a great big hand. What a damn rich man. I had to brave this cold all night. Not because there were no houses to put them in, but because the system under which... Thank Dr. Watson and for giving me this opportunity. I'm excited, and I believe that because all of us are here, we're saying something. And I want to thank you for being here today, and as we come together collectively, I want to tell you who we are. Occupy the Dream is committed to the mission of nonviolent social action, public protests, coalition building, network. To demand economic change in our system. Let me be very clear, because I don't know how long we'll have the media with us, but we didn't come today as people of faith to talk about pie in the sky by and by as we fly once we die. Right. But we came to talk about something sound on the ground by the pound that can be found while we still around. We have come today to raise our voices in protest against economic tyranny and the corporate takeover of the government because the political and economic systems in our country are broken. We have the most people living in poverty in American history. We have the most severe uh, inequality of wealth in American history. The four richest people, count them, just four, the four richest people in our country have as much wealth as 350 million Americans combined. Production and wealth creation have exploded, and most of it has gone to the top one hundredth of one percent of the population. And so we are here today to give voice to the other ninety-nine percent. We cannot be silent in the face of economic injustice, and so we have gathered from a number of churches and community organizations to declare that we have lost our laryngitis. Yeah. We have recovered our voice and our vision, yeah. and we plan to occupy until things change. Yeah. So here's where you come in. This is what I need you to do, even though it's cold. First of all, I need you to understand that we have come in peace. This is a nonviolent protest. Yeah. Number two, don't block the streets or the sidewalks. Don't give anybody an, a chance to uh, have something to get in your face about. Yeah. Then number three, today we're going to be our own media. We're grateful for the news outlets that are here, but we're grateful for technology that allows wave at me. Wave at me. Now this is what I want you to remember because it'll help you to understand why we're here. There are some people who last night us to share our own message. And so today I want you to whip out your cell phone so that we can tell our story of what this day means and what went on. And so that means we need you to tweet. Everybody say tweet. tweet. We need you to text. Everybody say text. text. 
and we need you to post it to Facebook and YouTube. Take pictures, shoot video, talk to each other about how things should be economically in this country. Talk to each other about why our being here is important and then share those conversations with the world on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you're going to tweet, use the hashtag number sign Occupy Dream OWS. That's Occupy Dream OWS so that we can join our voices with the voices of all those others across the nation and 12 other locations outside of 12 other Federal Reserve Banks and become a trending topic today. CNN gonna get the word. Fox will figure it out later. But if you put it out there, we want to post no less than 10,000 tweets today in the next couple of hours. So use that hashtag Occupy Dream OWS so that our voice can be heard. Now we've got some great singers and we could not come today on Martin Luther King's birthday without singing a song that came to be known as his mantra. As they were marching for our civil rights, for human rights, they would join their hands. Even on cold days like today, they would usually cross their hands this way to get real close. And I figured out what that meant this morning because when you get that close, you can feel the other person's body heat. So, so this is what I'm going to ask you to do. If you would join hands with your neighbor on the left and right. Come on up here, JD and Alex. Come on, sing We Shall Overcome. We Shall Overcome. We shall overcome. We shall against a man who doesn't get it? Mm. I don't understand that. Yeah. I, uh, um, they, they, I put in a bill, an ordinance, to exempt this park as a free speech zone. Yeah. I, I don't care whether it's Occupy or the Tea Party. We ought to be able to have free speech in Richmond, Virginia. Particularly, particularly in light of our history. Yeah. 
a history of, of, of slavery and slave sales, the largest outside of New Orleans, right down here in Chaco Bottom. A history of Jim Crow and the Black Codes, right here in Richmond, Virginia. A history, a history of massive resistance that whose epicenter was the time dispatching news leader right here in the city for the whole South. We can begin to heal that history. I need y'all. That bill's going to come up on the 23rd of this month, 6 o'clock City Hall. Uh, I don't know whether you remember or whether you were here, Pastor Watson, back in 97, when City Council voted... Well, thank you for asking those questions. Occupy the Dream for me is uh, a wonderful opportunity for the community to come together and recognize the work and continue the work that Dr. Martin Luther King did for America, and not only for America, but for the whole world. Many people don't realize the global significance that Dr. Martin Luther King had. And so it is incumbent upon us, the next generation, to carry his vision forward. And so I'm so ever thankful for the opportunity to occupy the vision and continue the works of Dr. Luther, Martin Luther King to, um, to uplift um, all peoples, but particularly concentrating on the uplift of African Americans. And on that note, I'd also like to say that uh, we as African Americans really should embrace our African history because that is where our strength lies. And so, um, I, you know, occupy the vision, and the vision is um, our light and our love. Thank you. Okay, this is this marching is and praying just to have Dr. Martin Luther King Day, and it it happened for several years during the 80s, where you know college students and business people and just the community at large came out to the mall and marched in thick snow and ice, and so we were out there. Um, where Stevie Wonder was singing happy birthday to Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King and everybody were out. And so, um, you know, never let the weather be a deterrent. Um, no matter what the weather, and I'm speaking of, you know, emotional weather, social weather, whatever weather, cl or just climate weather, just always remember um, to be strong, and Dr. Martin Luther King would not have it any other way. And so let's continue to forward we have today to commemorate his works, and let's continue that. Let, let everybody know what year this is and Martin Luther King's birthday. Martin Luther King's birthday, actual birth, I believe, is January 15th. We celebrate his holiday today, which is January 16th, every year in January. And the year? And the year.